Welcome back to a very special Friday edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Um, before we get into today's interview, I'm going to stop you right here, stop the interview, and go back to yesterday's interview, Thursday's interview with Big Brothers and Big Sisters President and CEO Ken Lee McQuello, because this interview will make more sense if you listen to that one before you listen to this one. And the reason behind that is because in the later part of the interview, we talked about a fundraiser that the Big Brothers and Big Sisters is holding, and that is Jeremy's Big Run, where Jeremy Farkas is running from Mexico to uh, Canada. It, it may not look like it if you're watching this on YouTube, but he is doing it. Uh, Jeremy, thank you so much for being part of this and so happy that you're able to come on the show. Well, I, I really appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, it's it's just by complete luck that it worked out. And right now I'm stopping for just a day in the city of uh, Big Bear Lake, California. I'm at about mile 270 of 2,660. So it's been about 20 days so far on the road. And it's just been fantastic. I am out in the wilderness probably for about five, six days at a time. And then every so often I wander into these towns to be able to get uh, food and I'm glad that you, you were able to catch me. Well, let's start off with the basic question. We got the story of how Big Brothers and Big Sisters got involved in this organization, in this uh, fundraiser. How did the Jeremy's Big Run come about? Well, I think for so many people, it just seems so random. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But for me, it's something I've always been passionate about, you know, in media and politics, uh, the perceptions we get of politicians are very one dimensional. You, you get it boiled down to just talking points, policy, that sort of thing. But for me, I'm always been an avid outdoorsman. I'm a certified wilderness first responder. Even over the past five years or so, I've done about, I'm gonna say at least 300 uh, Rocky Mountain hikes, scrambles, backcountry trips. So it's always been something I've really been passionate about, but also when I think about uh, youth mentorship organizations like Big Brothers and Big Sisters, always been very passionate uh, for the work that they've done. But I think just on a more practical level, after the election, I had so many people reaching out to me. They said, hey, we wanna know what you're doing next. And when you're running again, they wanted to be the first person to write me a check. So a light bulb went off in my head and I said, you know, if I'm running again, it doesn't necessarily have to be for politics. So I put two and two together, reached out to Ken and his incredible team at Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and we're off to the races. And it took just a couple days, really, to be able to get everything together. And before long, I was uh, on an airplane uh, down to Palm Springs. A day or two after that, I had a couple friends of mine uh, drive me out to the Mexican desert, leave me at the border, and... Uh, I've been on foot uh, ever since then, and it's just been an incredible experience. We smashed through the $50,000 fundraising goal that we had initially, and we're well on our way to the second goal of 100,000. So it's been a great, incredible experience. And every step of the way, I've been able to journal everything on social media, which has just been phenomenal seeing the, the reception and how Calgarians have stepped up in such a big way to help this organization. Now, during yesterday's interview, and I'm not sure if Ken was supposed to give spill the details on it a little bit, but he said one of the reasons why you approach Big Brothers and Big Sisters is about giving back and mentorship. And he said that there's someone in your life who was a very big mentor in your life, but also uh, portrayed that characteristic that so many people should do. I think if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's your grandmother, correct? Yeah, that's right. My, my granny Liz Tisha, she, for many decades, she was an elementary school teacher and mentor in East Calgary. And for me personally, I grew up as a, uh, in an immigrant family. And the fact that I could come from East Calgary and Dover and be elected as one of the, the youngest city councillors ever elected, uh, at the open, it was first openly LGBTQ councillor, things like that. Uh, all the success that I've appreciated comes from the involvement of good mentors in my life. So uh, it's lined up in an incredible way. And, and my granny, she would always tell me, don't just be good, be good for something. So I had the skills, I had the connections. And so often you see these, these former politicians use their connections to kind of get involved in the lobbyist uh, endeavors or to just run and over and over for different levels of office. But for me, I wanted to make sure that, yeah, of course, I want to continue to be able to contribute. But it doesn't necessarily have to be my, my name on a ballot to be able to make that kind of impact. 
Now you, you've talked about you are a, a roughly about 22 days, 21 days, 23 days into this run so far as of recording this. Yep. That moment when you get dropped off in the middle of a desert, your friends leave you. Is the is that the moment when panic sets in and goes, what have I gotten myself into? Because Canada seems like a very far away place compared to where I'm starting. Well, you know, it, it was phenomenal because <laughs> before I even set one foot on the trail, we'd smash through that $50,000 goal. So for me, the, the worry was more, well, I'm going to do this big thing. Our Calgarian's going to show up. Is the support going to be there? So my worry, my fear was more that we wouldn't be able to raise the money by the time that I'd be done the whole thing. But now it's sort of like, oh boy, now I really got to do this thing. So <laughs> quitting at that point was not an option, but there's been some uh, interesting points along the trail. You know, in Southern California, there's a big drought. Water is a huge issue. It's so hot, like in the daytime, it might be like 30, 35 degrees Celsius, but overnight it's about minus five, minus 10 Celsius. So it's just been crazy to uh, work out the bugs, uh, the logistics, everything like that. But in terms of just my own preparations, I feel pretty confident. So I'm ramping up mileage now to about 35, 40 kilometers uh, a day, feeling pretty strong. My body still has everything together, but uh, it's still a long way to go. The, the idea of doing this journey must have been sort of a daunting task to actually train for it because... Calgary is one beast in itself. There are different, like there's Chinooks and you get the weird weather patterns, but actually being in a desert. And I know drum heller, people in drum heller who are listening to this are saying we're a desert. Well, technically yes, but you don't get plus 34 uh, like degrees Celsius in the middle of February or March or April. Has that been the biggest challenge for you is to get accustomed to sort of the weather patterns and actually getting accustomed to the terrain, because I'm assuming you've never done this trail before. So it's a complete new endeavor for you. Yeah, it's, it's I, I've had a lot of uh, backcountry experience. I'm a certified wilderness first responder. So I know a bit of what I'm doing, but man, it's, it's been, it's been pretty tough. It's not uh, anything like we have at home with the Rockies. Like we have, we have beautiful terrain, <laughs> steep mountains, that sort of thing. But the desert is a whole different beast. And, you know, I haven't even mentioned the, the scorpions and the rattlesnakes and all of the uh, <laughs> environmental concerns. But one thing that has really been incredible is the, the culture around the trail that these various towns have, and in particular, the so-called trail angels. There's these volunteers who what they'll do is they'll spend their time dropping off, say, water caches and particularly challenging uh, spots. They'll uh, be offering rides into town because the trail doesn't often uh, go to anywhere that's useful. Often it'll go to a highway intersection and the town might be 10, 15, 20 miles away. So if you need to be able to go into town to get food, you need somebody to help you. So I'm, uh, I'm solo and I'm unsupported, but I've only been able to get this far because of the generosity, the kindness of the people around me. Uh, on the trail, they have the saying, they say that, if you want to go fast, you go alone. And if you want to go far, you go with friends. And this is definitely a story of going far. Well, I found it interesting. I think it was either Saturday or Sunday this weekend. You posted a video of you actually finding water in the desert, a bottle of water. And I've never seen a guy light up so much that I had in that video where you just went, this is a godsend. I don't know who put it there, but like it's sparkling water. It is the greatest thing on God's green earth. Like you were so happy about that. Are you finding other things along this? Like you're talking about these angels, but are you finding other like moments where you're going, I can't believe other people are actually putting stuff out there because you think in the wilderness, people just wouldn't care and it would just be about themselves, right? Yeah, journaling the experience has been pretty interesting. I think that when I started with these daily journals, there's quite a few people out there who said, well, just stick to the politics. This is not what I follow you for. But I, I didn't really listen to that. So I've been journaling a lot of these experiences, the, the people who have helped me along the way. And a lot of it's really tough to put into words, but I'm just really grateful for the help. Like this morning, I went for a breakfast and I forgot my credit card at uh, the diner. And it was about three blocks later when I was walking to the post office that the uh, waitress had actually run out of the, the diner to come and find me. 
that sort of thing. So it's just the, the incredible amount of kindness and uh, just the support from complete strangers that have just made this such an incredible experience. What, what does that tell you about humanity? Because we always talk about what politicians are doing and all that, but you're seeing firsthand people giving back to complete strangers. And in essence, that's what you're doing to big brothers and big sisters, because you're not, you don't, you aren't connected to the big brothers and the mentors and the actual littles who are going to be benefiting from this hundred thousand dollars that you're raising potentially even more if we surpass that hundred. What does that tell you about humanity? Is it on the right path? Because we find ourselves in such a divided time right now that some people would be going, well, I can't trust anyone, so I'm not going to. But it sounds like from you, people are generous and people are willing to help out people who are struggling. Well, I think the, the fact is, is that uh, I've already benefited. You know, I'm all, the reason that I'm here enjoying the opportunity that, that I am today, as well as the success I have in the past is because of that mentorship. It's because of people seeing in me potential. And I think that's exactly what uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters does every single day is they help ignite that potential in Calgary's kids who need it the most and leverages the, leverages the name of the game. And I think this, uh, I would almost describe what I'm doing now as a little bit of a, a tour of small town America. And I would say generally people are incredibly kind. They're, they're awesome. And when I share my stories about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, people's light, eyes just lit, light up. And even people that I just meet on the trail, many of them have donated uh, to the campaign that we're doing. And it really motivates me to uh, carry that forward. And what has just been really, I'm gonna say the toughest part for me emotionally is when the kids who are following along on my Facebook page, the, when they write to me, they, they ask me, have you <laughs> ran into a bear? What, what's it, what is in your backpack? Those sort of things. And I've just been trying really hard to be able to follow up on those comments reply with postcards and stuff like that but so i gotta i gotta ask the million dollar question for those kids who are listening who you haven't had a chance have you run into a bear you've talked about scorpions you've talked about rattlesnakes (laughs) but what about bears we gotta know (laughs) so in in the past in alberta yes i've run into grizzlies and brown bears but not so far here in california i think it's way too dry there isn't the climate and the berries and and that sort of thing but i am entering sort of this mountainous area and the town that I'm in is called Big Bear Lake. So it is known for bears, perhaps sometime in the past. So I would say keep your eyes peeled, but I hope that uh, they stay well in the forest and uh, don't bother me in my tent at night. You talked about the good, but you talked about the emotional toll that this can take on one. And I, I, I got to ask the question because while it's great what you're doing, how is it mentally to be out there by yourself while people are helping you, but you're doing this by yourself, you are one person, and there must be days when you're thinking to yourself, I can't go on because it probably does take a toll, but you have to because you're one of those people that I can imagine don't quit halfway through or 20 days into a hundred day hike. I would say we're, we're never alone, even if we're in the middle of nowhere and we're the the sum of our experiences and I am who I am because of the people who saw something in me that uh, had potential. And even if I'm in a situation where I'm not quite sure what to do, I have people that I can call on. Even just the other day, I I ran into a situation with, uh, uh, it's actually in my blog for today. It's uh, called the Poodle Dog Bush. And (laughs) I was able through a satellite communicator make sure that I understood what I was up against took appropriate precautions, but for better or for worse in this kind of world, how uh, interconnected we are, we're, we're definitely never alone. And I think that kind of speaks to the mission of Big Brothers and Big Sisters is that, you know, whatever you're going through, whatever challenges you're facing, there's, there's always potential, there's always opportunity there, and there's always people who are going to see something in good, good in you. And I know that what I'm doing is probably not easy. It's not something that you could just get up and decide that you want to do one day. It's something you have to work up to, but it's really motivating for me to hear stories from kids who want to start to train to be able to do something like I'm doing now. And that is really motivating for me to think, sure, we all have our bad days, but uh, I know that it's definitely going to be worth it. And already with the incredible 
amount of support that we've received from Calgarians for this campaign, it's already been an incredible success. And I know that we're going to be able to smash through that $100,000 goal and maybe more by the time I make it back home to Calgary. Being by yourself in a secluded area, walking while you are connected, you have time to think. What's been on your mind during this time? What has been on? What's been going through Jeremy Farkas's mind on the days when he's just running alone by himself in wilderness, California, Utah, Arizona, all of the above? Uh, I, I think a lot about my past experiences. I, I think a lot about uh, my girlfriend. I think about my friends, my family. I wonder about what's going on at home, but. I think most of all, I think that uh, I'm here for a reason. I feel like, uh, frankly, the results of the election were the best possible thing that could have happened to me personally. And it's just been an incredibly rewarding experience being out here, seeing what I'm experiencing and just being able to develop my own skills and as an outdoorsman, as a photographer, uh, being able to use my first responder skills, actually assisting uh, some of the people that I've ran into already. Oh, wow. Um, that's been fantastic. and sort of thinking already 20 days in, probably 100 days more or so uh, for this project, but I'm thinking about, well, what comes after this? What am I gonna do uh, when I come home? And it's probably never going to be anything like this. So I'm just, I guess, savoring that once in a lifetime opportunity that I've been blessed with for this time being. I, I know you're, I'm, I don't wanna keep you too long because I know you probably do wanna relax on your one day before you get back out on the trail. But I, I gotta ask the question, what would you want Calgarians, Albertans, Canadians who are listening to this right now, because we have listeners from across Canada, to know about this run, who you are, and why you're doing this. I would say it's just, it's leverage. It's the name of the game. It's very tough right now for these charitable organizations to, to get their message out. But Big Brothers and Big Sisters is such an incredible organization. They're, they're a lean, mean machine where, well, not mean, they're <laughs> incredibly kind but I think you, you get my drift in terms of they're incredibly efficient. And for me, my own reputation as being some of a stickler on the finances, fiscally conservative, you know, I am so incredibly proud to be associated with this organization because of the fact that every dollar that uh, they're able to raise is able to be leveraged. So on a 10, 20 times uh, basis. So that amount of impact is incredible, especially when we think about our future generations, kids out there who need that support. And it's been proven, it's been proven that that one-to-one -one mentorship relationship is the most impactful change and possibility, possibility igniting uh, event that can happen to kids like this. So what I would again, just, just use any of the profile and any of the connections and any of the platform that uh, I have to draw as much attention as possible to this organization because of the incredible work and the incredible good that uh, they do. And uh, the, the results are immediate and the results are impactful. As I said at the beginning of this interview, if you haven't already, head back to that Thursday episode with Ken Lima Quelo because we we talk about what the organization does and how they give back and what this money that Jeremy is raising to go towards them will do and uh, help people within Calgary and area. Um, but you are not at that hundred thousand dollar mark yet as of as of recording this i shouldn't say as of airing because knowing you you'll probably surpass it by friday when this actually airs um how can people donate because i'm assuming if you surpass it you'll up it by another fifty thousand, and you'll keep on going until you get home so how can people donate how can people give back how can people follow your journey from mexico to canada yeah my, my friend uh Nahed Nenshi, he joked that the first $50,000 was easy because people were writing the checks to get me out of town. And the next 50,000 is tougher because the checks are to let me back into the city. <laughs> so it might be a little bit tougher, but bbbscalgary.ca is the, the website where you can learn more about the organization, the impact of uh, those contributions. For me, I'm publishing that trail journal uh, actively on Facebook. So that's facebook.com slash Jeremy, J-E-R-O-M-Y, Y-Y-C. And then otherwise just on the various uh, channels and 
definitely looking forward to any of the questions, comments, people following along. And I do try to remain a little bit more interactive uh, when I do have the internet connection. Uh, for those who have listened to the show before or watched it, you know what I'm about to say. The link to the Big Brothers Big Sisters website, all of Jeremy's social media accounts in the show notes. If you're listening to this while driving, please pull over before you do that or get home and then check it out uh, and donate. Donate if you can, because this is a great organization. This is a great uh, fundraiser. And uh, Jeremy, uh, I, like I said, I'm honored that you're able to take 20 minutes out of your day and sit down and chat with me because I can imagine you get a lot of these interviews, but also get a lot of questions. So thank you for taking time and doing this show. Well, thanks for the opportunity. And again, this has been such an incredible experience and Shout out to Ken and the, the rest of the team at uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters. It's been such an incredible support to me personally. So encouraging, uh, constant, uh, kind words and that sort of thing. And, you know, the, the political wilderness was not my choice, but I think the literal wilderness is this time. And uh, it's been uh, just an incredible opportunity to see the, the impact that we've already been able to make uh, in the lives of these kids. Actually, I do have one last question. I should have asked this beforehand, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What's the strangest thing you've come across so far? What is the one thing that you went, I did not expect to see that. I can imagine it being a bottle of water, a bottle of sparkling water in the middle of the desert, but what's been the one thing that you went, whoa, did not expect to see that in the middle of California desert? Oh man, there's there's so <laughs> many experiences. There's so many things to count. Uh, I saw on the side of a mountain, like a giant iron cog that would, would have been like a couple tons I have no idea how it went up there. Maybe like uh, it was floated up there by a helicopter. I saw a old water cistern, like a tank that uh, was in the middle of the desert. And I think it's kind of like a rain barrel, but the water was like jet black. And I could see inside like a, a slithering snake. And, <laughs> and it was the only water within like 10 or 20 miles. And the, the temptation was, do you stick your hand in there to try to get some water? And like, <laughs> there's just so many weird things that I, I would just encourage people to check out my, my Facebook page if they're, if they're keen to do that. And, and not to mention, say, just the scorpions in your shoes when they crawl in there when you're taking a rest. Like, it's, <laughs> there's just so many things. But, uh, <laughs> no. I, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> Like I, I get like I, I told Ken this uh, yesterday during our interview. Like I, I get scared when I see a mouse. So scorpion, I'm done. I can't do it, man. I would just be out of there. I'd be like, get me a helicopter, get me on a plane somewhere because I want to go somewhere nice, not a scorpion. But I, I'll maybe end on like a, a positive note. I would say the strangest <laughs> thing for me was running out of the Interstate 10 near Cabazon, sort of Palm Desert, Palm Springs area. I was climbing up this just horrible, horrible mountainside. And my morale was probably the lowest that it has been or had been for the entire trip. And I was keeping my head down, tucked, just like trying to not, not die of sweating and uh, completely losing all my, my water. But all of a sudden I was jolted out of the experience by somebody yelling across to me, are you Jeremy? And there is somebody actually who was visiting from Calgary following my Facebook page and they had gone on that hike on the off chance that uh, they would intercept me. And at that point, this incredibly generous lady, Debbie, she offered me water, oranges, fruit, all sorts of stuff. And it was just the most completely surreal experience because for, I guess the, the time being, I sort of thought I'm going through this experience, but it's a bit in isolation to the rest of the world. But the fact that there's hundreds, if not thousands of people following online and sort of part of the journey with me, that I sort of understand on, understood on an intellectual level, but I didn't understand it on an emotional level until I saw that manifest right in front of me, almost like an angel would in person. Jeremy, I again want to thank you so much for doing this. Um, I wish you the best of luck. We will be following along. If you can, I know it's tough out there right now, but if you can, donate a few dollars to this cause because it's a great organization. It's a great fundraiser. And like I said, follow along. We'll have the show links to Jeremy's social media accounts uh, in uh, the show notes. So check out his Facebook. That's where I'm assuming you do most of your posting, but his other social media accounts will be there as well. Jeremy, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks again for the opportunity. 
So with that, uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, guys, get out from behind the camera, get out from behind the cell phone and have a conversation with somebody. It does actually make our life a little bit better when we actually talk to people instead of that whole 240 character tweet. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, guys, keep talking. Thank you.